private jets, stretch limos, and lavish hotel suites are just some of the perks for Las Vegas' royal family, the High Rollers. But what about the low rollers, the nickel and dime players? They'll show you how they're living large on little or no money. Be it lucky seven or sevens across, they're all getting rich in Las Vegas. Las Vegas has always been known for its excessive show of pomp and opulence. The city sparkles like a veritable treasure trove of jeweled riches, but the brightest and most prized gems in the Valley of the Dollars are the preferred players, the High Rollers. High Roller to me has a very special meaning, and the meaning usually runs into at least five figures. If, if you're talking about a High Roller in Vegas today, you're talking about somebody that's coming out with at least $25,000. However, it's the nickel, quarter, and dollar players that actually generate the majority of casino revenue, the low rollers, the grinders. Well, the casinos get the grinders, if you will, and the low rollers into their hotel through their themes and through their attractions. Then it's up to that casino to retain that player. Over time, the casinos know they'll nickel and dime the small players until they've spent their meager gambling budgets. But the name of the game is the big player with the big bank role. The strip hotels are fiercely competing for their limitless gambling budgets and extravagant wagers, hoping their luck will run out at their property. As far as the high rollers go, we give them what I call show up money, where that we'll tell a player, hey, listen, if you just come over and visit us, I'll give you $100,000 for your trouble. We give players discounts on loss. We give them what we call lucky money. In Las Vegas, the players are rated, and the biggest fish in the sea of high rollers is known as a whale. We're talking about people who are big. I mean, even in corporate America today, they can make a difference in your bottom line. They can hit you for 15 or 20 million. Uh, but again, there's probably only one or 200 people in the world that would fit the whale category of high roller. Uh, the high rollers are all risk takers. They love to play for the turn of the card. They like to make their date with destiny and see what happens. Some high rollers are in a league of their own. Legends whirl around Australia's richest man, Kerry Packer, who makes the term whale seem almost diminutive. He has been known to lose $20 million or win $20 million on one night. He plays Baccarat at $250,000 a hand. In 15 seconds, he can win or lose $250,000. Packer is also one of the town's biggest tippers. He's been known to pay off cocktail waitresses' mortgages and has given away $2 million in tips on a single weekend to the dealers. Now, there are other people, such as Bill Gates, who comes to Las Vegas and he gambles, and he wagers exactly $5 a hand because he doesn't play to win or lose. He just plays to pass the time. Bill Gates may be a low roller of a different kind, but what would happen if a real low roller got lucky and took the casino for a bundle? You're being treated just like the whales are because all of a sudden you are a whale. They want that money back so you get all the perks and many many a person has come to this town and within a couple hours he's upstairs and he's staying in the very finest suite he's got the limousine he's got the host on his arm and they're taking all the shows they're whining and dining doing anything they can to keep him on that property until he's broke again back to the nickel slots but in today's competitive market the high rollers have the upper hand and they know it the question is, just how far will the casinos go for these pampered risk takers? You come in there, there's a, there's a stretch limousine waiting for you at the airport. You know, they pick up your bags for you. You go into your high roller suite, there's a butler. Your car is ready at a moment's notice. If you don't like part of the wall, they'll tear the wall out for you. We're talking about people who are big. The object is to keep the high roller in the casino. Treat them like kings. That's why they're given the most expensive suites in town, for free. Many of these sumptuous digs cost well over a million dollars to build and will not under any circumstances be rented to anyone who doesn't spend a fortune in the casino. Some of the largest and most expensive high roller accommodations in town can be found at the MGM Grand. They call it the mansion. Security is so strict that if you're not one of their guests, the only way to catch a glimpse is from a distant rooftop. Most people don't even know that these mini mansions exist, which is all part of the mystique. 
The mystique of the high roller from the player's perspective is they just can't understand how someone will come into this community, sit down at a table and wager more than most people make in five years. High rollers, low rollers, they're both getting rich in Las Vegas. The casinos can't survive without either of them, yet how and where they gamble is very different. Lately, the big players have been taking their sizable bank rolls to the Aladdin Resort Casino, home of the very prestigious London Club, which was voted as the number one high rollers area in Las Vegas by Chance Magazine. London well, Club is definitely a truly European establishment. However, the way that we designed it, we made it so that we could cater to all people from all countries. Asians love to come here because of some design features as you walk through that will remind you a little bit of Indonesia and Bali. If you're coming from another walk of life from Southern California, you'll see some aspects of Santa Barbara and Southern California architecture. Or if you're coming from Europe, you'll walk through and you'll see lovely wood panel walls with original art. So everybody feels comfortable. Nestled above the Aladdin's main casino, the 35,000 square foot London Club is a complete destination in and of itself. I think you would feel that you're in an area which was uh, had a very good decor, a different style, different feel about it, that our team members, our employees, etc. would be friendly, courteous, helpful, very smart, very elegant, and that you were receiving the best that we could possibly give you in terms of service and, and welcome. Everything is geared to the high roller's sense of style. Richly marbled passages, colorful artwork and wall mountings, but the color they like best is green. In fact, the London Club holds the record for the world's highest gambling plaque or playing chip, which represents the amount of money a player can wager. We have a gaming plaque that's worth $10 million. We have uh, the second highest denomination at $5 million. So we. Uh, cater to those high-end rollers. If you want to bet it high, you come to the London Club. Like a high-limit slot parlor with machines that require $500 for a single pull, or video poker machines with $100,000 payoffs, far from the nickel machines in the regular casino. Well, some people feel comfortable, some people feel uncomfortable in, uh, in, these, in this kind of uh, atmosphere. So uh, they have the choice of uh, going uh, downstairs to the other casino or going downstairs to play the slot machines, or they can come in and play high limit uh, blackjack poker baccarat las vegas has never been known for civility or refinement so what brings the dignified brits who run the london club to glitter city las vegas is is the mecca is the is the big apple there's no question it's head and shoulders above anything else not only in terms of the town itself as a destination resort and all the splendid things you can see, but the sheer magnitude of money is enormous. Husband and wife casino directors Wendy and Derek Lombias are ever vigilant and always seem to know who's playing in their parlor. The Asians, for instance, if they win, they're very calm, very collective, and you wouldn't know if they're won or lost. Um, the, the, Americans. the Americans, they let you know they've won. <laughs> they're whooping and cheering. And... They, they let them, their hair down, they enjoy themselves, have a bit of fun. You know, they're, they're... They could be fun. No matter which corner of the globe their guests are from, they all seem to be fired up about the London Club's exquisite eatery. With a team of master chefs, the cuisine is prepared to one's ethnic preference and taste, perfect for getting the strength to get back to the tables. And executive chef Jacques Van Staden brings a lot more to the table than most, especially for high rollers. We'll have high rollers that comes in and will buy a whole kilo of caviar, and you know, and it's right there. We charge, you know, you'll charge anywhere from seven to ten thousand dollars sometimes, depending on which caviar. But what happens is, like a lot of times, we'll get like you know, shark's fin soup. Our shark's fin soup is one hundred and twenty. Dollars, you know, for a bowl. You want a ham and cheese sandwich? You want a hot dog in the Lana Club restaurant? We will provide. But even if we don't have it on property, you want it, we will get it for you. It doesn't matter what it is. The London Club may cater to the sophisticated high roller, but the doors are open to the public, so anyone can walk in. Even the less refined with an urge for high stakes gambling can play. When we opened our first week, we had somebody who walked around with a carrier bag and a short vest and shorts on, and he was a huge player. He was a whale. When we return, we'll follow a million dollar player at the London Club. We'll also meet a casino host who will jump through hoops to bring in the biggest players.
I tell a lot of hosts you, that you're, you're still a virgin until you beat a guy out of a million. I don't care if, it, if it's 20 trips in one year or if it's one night when he loses a million dollars. Most people who gamble in Vegas don't spend more than $300. Over time, their losses add up in the billions. Not satisfied with long-term gains, the casinos depend on high rollers who breeze in and out of town with their huge bankrolls, hoping to beat the house. The value of the high roller to the casinos is absolutely huge. It's estimated that it may account for as much as 10% of the win in Las Vegas, and that win in Las Vegas accounted for a little bit over $7 billion in the year 2000. The wealthiest of gamblers are often found living it up at Las Vegas' best high roller area, the London Club at the Aladdin. Safe. There to make sure his invited guests needs are taken care of is director of casino marketing and executive host Simon Burden. How is your limo coming in? Excellent. Wonderful. Simon has arranged for you at the jacuzzi penthouse suite on our top floor. Um, Everything has been prearranged to make Mr. C comfortable. Of course, his suite will be calm. Now, sir, there is a butler in the room waiting for you. Feel free to notify him if you need any restaurant reservations, show reservations, or anything like that. If By the way, the generic restaurant. name and salutation for a high roller is Mr. C, which is the first letter of his last name. This practice is said to have originated at Caesar's Palace to protect the player's identity. It's a pleasure to see you again. Thank you, bro. Mr. C is a big player, a whale. This is your living room, Mr. C. The money he is likely to bet in the casino more than adequately covers the cost of the penthouse suite and his private butler, Michael. This is beautiful, Mike. But a million dollar view of the strip comes close. Let me show you the rest of the suite, Mr. C. The High Roller Suite features a large master bedroom and a private party-sized jacuzzi with yet another view of the town. Other perks include gourmet dining wherever he wants, front row seats at shows that are virtually impossible to get on short notice. You name it, it's his for the asking. All he has to do is spend some quality time in the London Club. Can I help you, sir? Roger, Simon had sent me here to sign my application for my credit, please. Okay, I need your ID. Right now, he is setting up his line of pre-approved credit, which is the amount of money he can play in the casino. Okay, Mr. C, I have your application here. You've been approved for $1 million. I just need your signature and your Social Security number, please. Now it's time to get to the business of pleasure. A um, couple more things. I've got your limousine set for 1 o'clock. So that's all set. I've got the, uh, the massage all set for 215. With a million dollars in credit, Mr. C will take his markers or approved bankroll out in $250,000 increments and will be allowed to play up to three hands of blackjack at $15,000 each. Can I have 250, please? The dealer is now cutting out his first $250,000 in chips. The first four pink chips are worth $25,000 each, and the blue chips are worth $5,000. Good luck, Mr. C. Thank you, First hand of the day, he has placed three bets, each worth $15,000. Terrible. Very good. Stay. No. No, 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 no. That's not good. Not good start at all. Mr. C has just lost $45,000. Let's see if his second hand is any better. Wrong, wrong spot. Five. He's put up another $45,000, hoping to get back his previous Four. loss. Ah. He loses again. He's down $90,000. Now, to mix up the cards and break the pattern, he will only play two hands worth $30,000. Big one. 15? Stay. 13. I'm gonna stay in that one. 21. Renee, Renee, you're too hot. In less than a minute, he has lost $120,000. The hotel's investment in Mr. C is really paying off. Oh, Renee, killer. Over the course of the next few hours, Mr. C loses more than $200,000, but sticks with his basic strategy and comes back a little better than even money. Thank you. Yes. Real man? Real man. 
For all his efforts, at least his first go-round, he only comes out $7,500 ahead. When you consider the amount of money that has been exchanged, that's not exactly breaking the bank. That's not good. 21. Renee, Renee, Renee. But I'm sure he'll be back. If ah. can handle anything, we put them to the ultimate test. Dads, alone with their babies, at nap time. After a very full feeding. Can the leak stay locked through a long, milk-induced slumber? The leak too. Grab a dad and see for yourself. How compared to Pampers Baby Dry, Huggies all new Snug and Dry stops leaks. Again, we're here to gamble. Mr. C is like many of the other high rollers. It's not about the money, it's about winning. They say if you can afford to lose, then it's not gambling. But how do the casinos find these big players? They hire high-powered people like Steve Sear, one of the town's most celebrated and best connected executive hosts, to find high rollers who are eager to gamble millions. They're pretty liberal with the discounts. If the worst happens, I can probably get you 10 or 20,000 up front walking in the door money just to look good. I know you had a hundred thousand over at Caesars. I can just start you with the same amount if you'd like. Look, I got a million dollar player and a half million dollar player. So um, believe it or not, you'd be filler. You know, where's the best place to find gamblers? Gamblers. It's the easiest thing. They hang out together. They they go to the same clubs together. Um, the, you know, I, when I first started in this business, I thought my big players would be doctors and lawyers. Let me tell you, they're stiffs. Steve places his deep-pocketed clients into three categories. Uh, a third of my customers are so wealthy it doesn't matter. They win or lose 100000 Hey, that's their cost of entertainment. They'd rather risk 100000 have me pick them up in a private plane, cut in line, walk right to ringside so we can watch Tyson Holyfield fight, and to them that's worth Very the cost good. of entertainment. Let it ride. The other third shouldn't be here. They're gambling the rent and the mortgage, and you know what? I'm going to burn them out. The last third are young people that are trying it now. Steve's list of wealthy clients are mostly businessmen who wish to remain anonymous. However, his meteoric rise in status has been elevated by hosting some famous high rollers, such as basketball great Michael Jordan. But his personal pick for the high roller all-star team would have to be publisher Larry Flint. Larry's not afraid to win, and that's what makes him dangerous, and he'll get up and leave. That's why we base everything on what? Time. Give me time and I'll comp you because we know theoretically if you sit there, we're going to get you. Yet they keep coming back looking for the big win and anything else Steve can conjure up. Sometimes I feel like Mr. Rourke from uh, Fantasy Island because uh, it, it's amazing what players will ask for. In casino lingo, their wishes or demands are called perks or comps. In other words, give them anything they want to entice the customer into spending big money. I have one customer last year that got a Viper from uh, one property, he got a Cobra from another property, and a Mercedes from another property, and his girlfriend got a new Rolex. Now, say I give a guy a Mercedes, or, or the property gives a guy a Mercedes, it's 50 grand. Would you spend 50 grand to have a shot at a million? Absolutely. But the name of the game is to get these opulent men and women into the casino. Um, as a host, we need to maintain, while the customer is in-house, uh, his comps, his credit. You know, if I've got a guy and he's been in, say it's Saturday, he came in Friday night, hasn't made a lay down yet at the table, I'm calling and say, hey, Mr. S, what's going on? Are you sick? You know, I put you in full comp. I need some action, baby. I don't care if you win, but give me a shot at your money. In Vegas, you always hear someone say, these multi-billion dollar hotels weren't built on winners. But what if one of Steve's whales gets on a roll and wins big? Winning's okay. At the first of my career, and most hosts that you talk to at the beginning of the year, they sweat what? They sweat the play. I don't sweat the play, I sweat, I sweat the pay. You know, you gotta win it twice, okay? First, I gotta beat them out of it. Remember, 99% of all my customers play on credit. Then I gotta get them to pay. And how does the super host make sure the numbers add up on his side of the column? I want the guy, you know, we have a saying, he should mail his money in. I want the guy that's gonna give me really a shot at his money. Not a guy that's gonna play an hour, win 10 or 20 grand, and then stop. You know, I, I want losers, baby. When we return, we'll see the flip side of high rollers, the low rollers. Can this army of penny pinchers win the battle of casino riches? Uh, I'm not sure if that means that if you're the lowest of the low rollers that you're called a minnow, but they might.
Las Vegas casinos have always valued high rollers because of the outrageous wagers they're willing to make. But the big money really comes from the bottom of Glitter City's food chain, the low rollers. Las Vegas this year is going to host, I don't know, 35, 36 million people. Most of those will be what we term low rollers. Now, all you ever hear about are the big guys, the whales, the ones who spend all the money and stay in the suites. But the life's blood of the town comes from the middle market and the low rollers, people who come here on the cheap. If you come to Las Vegas and you're a 25 cent slot machine player, you typically have to put in five coins. And by doing that, you're betting, you know, dollar 25 a hand and you're getting eight hands every minute. So the casino's making a lot of money off of you. And in fact, they're a lot more valuable than the whales are. As a matter of fact, low roller play accounts for over 70% of revenues earned, which translates to over $7 billion a year. As a result, special casino hosts have been assigned to give these valued frugal customers the VIP treatment. As a slot host, what we do is we take care of our VIP players, but also the lower level players. So anything that we can do to assist the player, to make people happy, that's our job. We just make people happy. And the low roller couldn't be on a greater high than that of defying the odds and taking a bite out of the casino. In the slot department, I've seen someone win $400,000 on a $100 video poker machine. And I've also witnessed our Wheel of Fortune hitting almost a million dollars, and that was on quarters. So even a quarter player could win almost a million dollars on slots. It goes without saying that the hotels along the Strip are the shining lights of Las Vegas high stakes gaming. However, in recent years, a very different kind of hotel and casino has emerged that caters almost exclusively to the budget-minded risk takers. Touted by those who live in Las Vegas as the preferred places to go for the best odds, extended play, discount prices, better buffets, services, and loads of parking, the locals' casinos have become responsible for much of the city's wealth. Nearly 70% of the patrons at these outlying casinos live within a three to five mile radius and frequent them an average of two to three days a week. The locals' boom started in 1976 at the corner of Sahara and the I-15. Back then, it was just a tiny mom-and-pop neighborhood casino with just a few rows of slots and a handful of tables. Our chairman of the board's father, Frank Fatita Jr., uh, really started the concept, and he'd operated uh, strip casinos for a number of years. And he came up with the notion of, gee, I think there's a market for where the casino workers and people who aren't necessarily in the casino industry to go for entertainment, for gaming, restaurants, whatever. In the years to follow, these quaint little casinos have become big business and are actively traded on Wall Street. Offering the best odds, looser slots, gourmet food at cafeteria prices, cheap drinks, bingo, bowling, movie theaters, and child care centers. These establishments are the best kept secrets in the gaming industry. The high roller is looking for a different element and, and a lot of the properties on the strip can, can offer more of that. The local casino is looking for someone who comes three or four times, it doesn't want to play $10,000 a hand. They're looking to extend their play as long as they can. The locals' casinos generally attract a much older and loyal crowd. Far from the fleeting tourists who bring a youthful glamour to the properties along Las Vegas Boulevard. In fact, it's almost unheard of for a high roller to stray to one of these outlying gambling halls. As a visitor, the only concept you have is really the strip. And you never think of a casino off strip. So when I was in school here, I used to drive by Sam's Town and the Palace Station, and I'd see the parking lots par packed with, with cars, and I'd wonder, who's, who's gambling in there? Who, what are all those people doing? Because it was strange, every time I'd ask a local person in town, do you gamble, nobody ever admitted it. Vegas is the fastest growing city in the country. With more than 5,000 people moving in every month, the demand for locals product grows at an ever increasing pace. Because as they build more properties, well, guess what? 
our market grows because they have to hire more people and more people have to come to Las Vegas to, to work in the new hotels. And the more locals there are, the more likely they are to gamble at their friendly neighborhood casinos. We like to cater to our locals who, who, who have a budget, uh, not thousands and thousands of dollars, but who like to use a casino as entertainment. And while they have uh, dinner in our buffet, uh, they might walk in and spend $20 on the slot machine. And that's the majority of our business. Professor of Gaming Jim Kilby compared the games found at a local's casino versus a strip property such as Caesar's Palace. At Caesar's Palace, you'll find that probably 20% of the total slot machines are video poker. If you go to Sunset Station, you'll probably find that 80% of the slot machines are video poker. The Las Vegas local, which is a uh, sophisticated or somewhat intelligent gambler, they demand low casino advantage games. Video poker provides the lowest casino advantage. Well, the local casinos in Las Vegas, they understand this Las Vegas market very, very well, and virtually every one of them has the same formula. They have loose slot machines. They have good, cheap entertainment. You can eat cheaper in the local casinos than you can cook at home. Their cocktail waitresses don't wear any clothes. They cater to the base needs of the community at large, and it works. There's a big difference between the strip hotels and a local casino as far as the people are concerned. I think that's the biggest difference. It's like family members come in here, you know all the people's names. You get attached to them. You, you know when they're supposed to be here. You get concerned if they don't show up. It makes for a very good environment. It makes for a friendly, happy environment. The competition between locals casinos is anything but friendly. Sabotage, subterfuge, double dealing unheard of, but price wars, undercutting, and cheap drinks are the first line of defense. I can remember a time that uh, that uh, we offered one dollar drinks at the Royal Inn Casino. My, my father, Michael Gaughan, had that. And, uh, and they sent over word, well, they're gonna go to 50 cent drinks to uh, com combat our one dollar drinks. And we sent the guy back to them and said, you know what? You go to 50 cent drinks, we'll go to free drinks. We have major promotions. For example, we uh, invented a car a day giveaway in one month. These weren't junkers. I mean, they were, you know, nice cars, you know, Buicks, uh, Cadillacs in that area, 31 cars. The real draw for the serious local low roller is cash. Casino owner George Maloof loosened his machines to produce more winners and turned his property into the royal flush capital of the world. Sometimes it's, it's not so good for the casino because we pay out so many. Uh, we've had days where we've paid well over 120 royal flushes. Uh, I think one particular day we paid over 140. Uh, we've also had individuals that have won up to seven Royal Flushes in, in a 24-hour period. For a while, the low rollers were kind of frowned upon. Everybody wanted the, the high rollers, and everybody wanted the middle market. Now the low rollers are starting to become the important part of the sector that they really always have been, and casinos are embracing them more. And he should know, he was frowned upon for a long time until he found a way to beat the system. We'll find out how he did it when we return. We'll also find out how this low roller is getting rich and why Dan Rather calls her the queen of comps. Las Vegas hotels and casinos indulge their high-stakes players with high-priced rewards for their action. But this low-rolling grandmother has found a way to obliterate the casinos with the weapons of their own design. Slot clubs, comp systems, casino promotions, freebies, and anything else that wasn't nailed down. I can hardly remember all the comps that we've gotten down through the years. Uh, I can say that probably we haven't had to pay for a meal in Vegas for at least 15 or 16 years. The last year that, uh, before we had our condo, the last year that we stayed just in casino hotels. The snipers can handle anything. We put them to the ultimate test. Dads, alone with their babies, at nap time, after a very full feeding. Can the leak stay locked through a long, milk-induced slumber? No leak too. Grab a dad and see for yourself. How compared to Pampers Baby Dry, Huggies all new Snug and Dry stops 91 leaks. days in casino hotels and never paid for one. <laughs> 
These days, retired school teacher Jean Scott and her husband Brad are reaping the rewards for smart play, one nickel or quarter at a time. So all the gambling does is give us things that our small pension would not be able to provide. 18 years ago, Jean first started coming to Las Vegas and lost. Poring over every book she could find, she taught herself how to play video poker and is now considered one of the best players in the country, but still doesn't consider herself a pro. There are very few people who make their whole living gambling. They usually have other sources of income. It is possible, but it's <laughs> one pro says it's a hard it's a hard way to make easy money. She's a major proponent of casino slot clubs and is constantly preaching the many benefits and giveaways they offer. Your comps depend on how much you play. The thing I like to emphasize is the fact that low rollers do get comps, but so many people don't know that the system is set up, they don't take advantage of them. Jean's video poker winnings enabled her to buy a second home in Las Vegas. We did make enough money and we could have just piled it in the bank and looked at it, but I didn't think that would be very much fun. This is truly the house that Jacks are better built. Their home is a monument to player club prizes and all things superfluous. Uh, we have a whole closet full of logo jackets for each of us. We each have our own closet full. We have gotten stuffed animals. In fact, my grandchildren think that Santa Claus lives in a casino. Jean and Brad have won so many gifts, their garage has become a count museum of sorts. Uh, we got two uh, TV VCRs that, uh, that are going to go into each of the grandchildren's room. And then we get Beanie Babies, uh, so the kids always have something. We get beautiful gifts like cut glass things, particularly now that we're playing on the dollar level. Uh, as you go up from quarters to dollars and then further up, uh, the, the gifts get nicer. We get gift certificates, and then we can buy anything we want with that gift certificate. The last time we got a gift certificate, though, Brad wanted to buy two scooters with it, so I allowed him to buy his toys. Jean claims that anyone with enough discipline can rack up the points and fill their home with casino gifts. You just have to play the right game. Our game of choice is video poker. Why? you can win at it. A slot machine, on the whole, you cannot win. If you play a regular slot machine, you might get a jackpot or even a big jackpot one day, but you can't win over the long run. She won't go near the slot machines because the payback is set to pay off on a fixed schedule, as opposed to video poker, which state law requires to pay off randomly. And so, the way you tell a video poker machine and why we can play it, they have a schedule a pay table right on the front of them and we can tell by those pay tables what the payback is now so we know which video poker machines are playable because that means they pay back over a hundred percent you have to know the right strategy and you have to have the proper bankroll enough bankroll to go over the ups and downs that you will have we asked this extraordinary low roller how she spends her days. First, we would probably pick out a couple good coupons that we wanted to use in the area where we're going. We might just go into a casino and use a coupon, and that would be all we would do because it's a very good coupon. We've had coupons that are worth um, $50, $75. Uh, and a key here is Brad and I always gamble together and always do everything together. So then we might go someplace else and decide that we want to eat. She's actually a really good customer for me because she doesn't need any explaining. She already knows how to get her food, how to get her cash, and she's basically self-sufficient. She's a lot of fun and she knows exactly what she's doing. As Jean always says, the free drinks they give the low rollers at the nickel slots taste exactly the same as the ones they serve the high rollers. But what does the queen of comps do when the chips are down? Just what keeps her going? People ask why I'm so intense about this. The money's out there. All I have to do is go get it. When we return, Anthony Curtis will show us how to eat, drink, and gamble for free with a fistful of coupons and still walk away with the casino's money. The casinos don't want to tell you, and uh, most people don't realize that coupons can be very powerful, especially in a gambling town.
wants to strike it rich in Las Vegas. Most high rollers, it's more about the action. Winning and sometimes losing thousands of dollars is simply the cost of being entertained. For the low roller, it's more about gaining the advantage, decreasing the house edge, or just getting more for less. But most people are going to lose. That's expected. So what they want is some entitlement for coming here. They want to get something back, and that's where the deals come in. So, I mean, the guy comes out from, uh, from Omaha and comes to Vegas and uh, loses a, little bu a few bucks in the slots, goes back home, and his, his neighbor says, well, how'd you do in Vegas? And he says, well, I lost, but I don't want to tell you about that. Let me tell you about 99-cent Heineken's and $1.50 breakfasts and uh, $3 steak dinners. So that's where the fun is, and, and that's where the trade-off is. The casino, the casino says, we'll give you a little of this, and uh, you give us some of your money in the casino. Even if you don't hit that million dollar jackpot, you could stretch your low roller gambling dollars and extend your playing time. One of the best ways is by using discount coupons which are readily available all over town. It's just that most people don't know about them. More people don't know about coupons because the casinos know they're too strong. The casinos have them as inducements and they give them out, but they don't really, they don't really advertise them because they don't want everybody running around playing coupons. If they did, if everybody played a coupon on a gambling table, the casinos would go, would go bankrupt, they'd go broke. Curtis calls his advantage system couponomy and recommends that everyone look for these discounts. The analogy I like to use is gambling without a coupon is like sex without a condom. I mean, you, you gotta have it. And people who play without coupons are bucking the house edge. Once one of the town's most notorious card counters, Anthony Curtis has given up high stakes blackjack. The only cards up his sleeve these days are his touts for the best deals in town via his newsletter and website called the Las Vegas Advantage. Advisor. We simply go out and look at all the things that Vegas has to offer and compare and contrast and come up with the best ones and find out which places do have the best coupons to play, find out which places are giving away the two-for-one buffets, and then uh, lead the readers to that, and of course take advantage of them ourselves. <laughs> Today, gambler, publisher, and couponomist Anthony Curtis has agreed to take our challenge. Can he turn the casino's deals, promotions, and discounts into hard cash in what he calls a mini coupon run? We're gonna see what the result is, and uh, I guarantee you we'll come out ahead when the day's over. First, he goes to the computer where he tracks the best deals in town. He'll do a quick analysis of which casinos are giving back the most on this particular day. Though Anthony's the quintessential master of getting something for nothing, he's absolutely convinced that anyone can do this. And they could eat off the coupons, and they could play off the coupons, and they could see shows off the coupons. And at the end of the day, uh, at the end of their trip, when they add up all they've spent and all they've made, they will come out very close to zero. And if they've been uh, very diligent, the, they could probably hack into their airfare pretty good too. Anthony and his friend Bethany start their run at the Sahara Hotel. As a rule of thumb, he always works with a partner. If two people are playing instead of one, then you're gonna get double the action on the tables. And remember, we have the advantage. When we play the coupons, we have the edge. So the more coupons we play, the more we'll win in the long run. Anthony starts his run by finding a dime on the floor. All right, dime on the floor, that counts. In the coupon run, everything goes into the bank. Dime counts, 10 cents up, okay? Now they assess the coupons they've just procured from the hotel. Two for one drink, that's good for later. Blackjack bonuses, extra points, shows, free slot play, keno, and loads of advertising are found in this particular fun book. Uh, $5 off the show is good. There, there's a good one, three ace. This one we will play. And $50 for 40 in chips, this one we will play. Their first bet is a three for two dollar blackjack. They lose and are down six dollars. Time to pull out that guaranteed ace. The odds favor Anthony and Bethany. She is dealt a face card worth 10. Blackjack. He's dealt another ace and splits his cards and puts up another $5. The dealer goes over 21 and busts. They are now 11.50 ahead and off to their next stop.
Coffee's five cents at the Westward Ho. So that dime I found earlier, two cups of coffee right now. Coffee isn't the only good deal at the Westward Ho. They're famous for some other colossal bargains as well. This is the world famous three quarter pound mega dog. Only 75 cents and probably big enough to feed a small nation. Mm. Wonderful. <laughs> and to go along with your big appetite, how about this 99 cent 27 ounce margarita? $2. Thank you. Cheers. At Vacation Village, you can present your airline ticket for a chance at the big wheel. Prizes include cash, drinks, or the dollar value of your airfare. Okay, we've already done our free spin for airfare. We didn't win our airfare, but we got $5 in our pocket. Now we get to play the coupon sheet here at Vacation Village. It has two good gambling coupons. One is a four for two for roulette. That's worth about two bucks, a little less than $2. The other is a $5 match play for craps, and that's worth about $2.50. So we got about $4.50 more here in expected value. We got a free hot dog if we're hungry when we're done, and of course a free drink, which I've already taken advantage of right here. So now it's off to the tables to play our coupons. Okay, our bet is black on the roulette wheel for a 4-2 payoff. Red, no good. Anthony loses his $2 while Bethany makes $4 and covers his loss. Maybe things will turn around for him at the craps table. He loses another five. Will her luck hold out? Four. This is a classic coupon result, actually. We played four coupons, lost two, me, one, two, Bethany, and this is our profit. Here's all of our money back, but we won five on the craps, we won two on the roulette, and we've also got the airfare spin for five. So we're up $12 at this point. Off to the Key Largo. They pick up their fun books and play a free hand of video poker and a chance to win a thousand bucks. They'll have to settle for a free drink. Card good, small, need her to break. Not good, good, great. All right. <laughs> Try to maximize our coupon. We just play what's called basic strategy, which is the best way to play your cards against the dealer's hand. He's got a nine against an eight. She's just gonna hit it, nothing fancy. Hope for the 10, good. Stick it underneath and hope the dealer gets stuck on the 18. That's it. That's good enough, 18, we win it. That's what we wanted. Feeling invincible, they play the next hand. Ah. And lose. That's all right, two and two, we still end up $10 winners. Here goes our profit. <laughs> One of the newest casinos in town is called Terribles. Don't let the name fool you. Anthony says their coupons aren't bad at all. They are so aggressively couponing that they've made their own magazine full of coupons that you can use. Like a $25 match play for blackjack. That's a hefty buy-in, but the payoff may be worth the gamble. Beth splits her cards and wins. All right, way to go. Their final stop, the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Here at Mr. Lucky's, Anthony says you'll find the best-priced meal in town. It's the special, but you won't find it on the menu, so you have to specifically ask for it. Steak and shrimp, $5.95. Okay, we came to the Hard Rock for two reasons. One, of course, was the steak and shrimp that we just ate, one of the best deals in Vegas. The other is the Hard Rock coupon package. They call it the six-pack, and there are six good coupons in this one, but two of them specifically we're going to use on the coupon run. One of the prized coupons is for a souvenir from the popular gift shop, and the other is another match play for a $10 bet. Me again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the end of our coupon run. Actually, we did a mini run. We went to five casinos. We won half of our bets. That was Bethany. Well done. Thank you. We lost half of our bets. That was me. Yet at the end of the night, our profit was $103.50, plus the 11 cents we found on the ground, $103.61. This is something that anyone can do. All you got to do is walk into the casinos with the coupons, ask for them, play them, leave, and you two will be splitting money at the end of the night in Las Vegas. All right? All right. All right. <laughs>
Whether you're a big time high roller lighting up the strip or a locals casino low roller playing for comps, it still comes down to just being there. A part of the action, a part of the city's boundless energy. Win or lose, they keep coming back.